Good day to all. I am Shivani and today I am going to discuss about the topic self archiving policies. In the previous presentation, I have mentioned the two ways of open access publishing that is the gold route and the green route. And today we will discuss about the self archiving policies. So what do you think the self-archiving is? Self-archiving is the act of publishing digital version of a scientific publications on the internet. When you self-archive your study, you open it up to anyone on the internet. Self-archiving, in other words, does your research visible, accessible, harvestable, searchable and usable to a larger audience potentially boosting its reach and effect and the number of citations it receives so uh, the question comes how can we self archive when you write uh, your article and submit it to any journal you have the right to self archive that particular article it may be in preprint or revised version that is accepted for publication or post prints when you make any changes with the article like changing the data it is the post print version you have the right to archive your article in the repositories in your institution so for doing this one must know about the publisher policies Now, what are the advantages of self-archiving associated? So, the advantages of self-archiving is that it expands science research and makes it accessible to the rest of the world. It is a cost-free method to increase the number of views, downloads and citations for a researcher's article. It shortens the time lag between the researcher's writing and the audience reading of the paper. The researcher's recognition in the field can subsequently improve their prospect or grant acquisition and tenure decision. It enables researchers to showcase their work even it has been published in a journal. Self-archiving repositories created by universities and research institutions offer one-step place for the world to see the entire gamut of research conducted by members of the university or institution. This can help attract external funding, faculty and students. So why isn't self-archiving more frequently used as it offers so many advantages? So the reasons are lack of knowledge about such advantages. Like many authors are ignorant of the benefit of the self-archiving. And as a result, even if their institutions have repositories, authors do not self-archive unless their institutions require it. Second is the fear of violating the journal's copyright policies. Most publications clearly express their copyright restrictions regarding self-archiving in their author guidelines. You will not infringe on any agreements if you read and understand these policies, most of which allow authors to self-archive. Third, self-archiving is thought to be time-consuming and inconvenient. Like, contrary to the popular misconception, it takes only approximately 10 minutes for a first paper when creating a profile account and only a tiny minority of users find it very difficult. The process becomes significantly more straightforward and quicker for successive paper. So because of these reasons, self-archiving is 
not more frequently used. Two more points are as follows. Concerns about the quality of article that has been self-archived means preprints are archived significantly more than the postprints in the field of the study such as computer science. Preprints are more self-archived allow research to be reviewed by the greater scientific community before it is submitted for peer review. Preprints are also clearly labeled as such in all archiving repositories. Because postprints are simply a copy of a peer reviewed published version of the journal, their quality does not need to be questioned. The next is fear of upsetting the status quo in scholarly publishing. Institutions may be hesitant to create repositories for the concern that they would be perceived as a replacement for publications. However, two prominent physics publishers, APS and IOPP, APS stands for American Physical Society, and IOPP is the Institute of Physics Publishing Limited, affirmed in a prior study that the physics preprint archive posed no danger to their business model. As a result, publishers and self-archiving serves may be able to live in harmony. Now, as we move forward, there are uh, four types of repositories available. Self-archiving of scholarly work can be done on personal servers, in repositories, or electronic archives. Different repositories are institutional repositories, where many research institutions, universities, and funded organizations are maintaining their own institutional repositories to showcase research outputs. Also, many have taken mandate policy that research output to be on open access. Second one is the subject based or you can say central based repositories where some repositories are tend to archive respective subject documents that is ELIS, our RECPEC archive and are for all of the subjects, central repositories like PEPMED or Biomedical Studies, Open DOAR, ROAR, etc. Third one is the social networking sites where majority researchers uploading their research documents on social networking sites like Academia, ResearchGate, etc with some restrictions for their wider visibility. And the fourth one is the personal websites. Some researchers are maintaining their own websites and servers to showcase their research output. As already said that for self-archiving the work, one must know about the publisher's policy. As discussed on the gold route, which is pure open access, if you are not able to publish in the open access and doing it with the publish, commercial publisher, then you must be aware of and must know about the publisher's policy as in the case of the commercial publishers, where we tend to transfer our copyright to the publishers. Like in certain forms of cell archiving may or may not be permitted depending on the conditions of the publication deal. Authors are sometimes unaware that they have signed an agreement bearing these forms of dissemination. Some authors agreement allow for some self archiving but not others. Like for example, they qualify for the dissemination of P pre-peer reviewed copy but not the final published PDF. They sometimes impose an embargo period which means that the author 
can only archive in the work in an open access system after a certain amount of time has passed. The frequent embargo period exists between 6 months to 12 months. So dealing with all these publisher policies and copyrights, here comes the Sherpa and Romeo which maintains a database of publisher and journal policies to assist writers or the authors in determining their publications self-archiving rules. This database is important for the open access authors. So, Sherpa and Romeo, what is basically? The Sherpa exists to provide a list of publisher policies about self-archiving. As an author, may find it challenging to self-archive because they are concerned about publication regulations. Sherpa is looking at difficulties surrounding scholarly communications in the future. It creates open access to the university institutional repositories to help research disseminate, researchers disseminate their findings more quickly and effective, efficiently worldwide. So, uh, the services that are being provided by Sherpa are Romeo, that is Publishers Copyright and Archiving Policies, Juliet, uh, one of the product of Sherpa, where research funders archiving mandates and guidelines are available, Open DOAR, it's the world, worldwide directory of open access repositories, and the next one is Sherpa Search where it allows simple full text searches. Now working with the Sherpa and Romeo. Here basically uh, is the updated interface of the Sherpa and Romeo database. You can officially use this website by going on the uh, website mentioned here HTTPS v2.sherpa.ac.uk slash Romeo slash. The changes that can be identified as since uh, it has updated the website. So here are the, some symbols that helps to know the updation of as the logo says modernized interface with the better support for the mobile devices improved search and browse that makes it's faster to find the information you need. New publishers policy layout that makes it easier to understand the different open access options that publishers allow. Iconography scheme to represent properties of the publisher policies. Now as we move forward, here is the website itself that says Sherpa Romeo is an online resource that aggregates and analyzes publisher open access policies from around the world and provides summaries of the publisher copyright and open access archiving policies on a journal by journal basis. As all journals may not have the same criteria, here is some simple home page with search option available uh, where you can type search the uh, journal by its title or ISSN number and the third is with the publisher's name. So uh, you may also have the publisher name uh, in the search option where you can put the name and the search like elsewhere, Emerald, Taylor and Francis. So basically this is the home page of Sherpa and Romeo where when you will visit the site this page will be open and you can directly search putting the keywords here. Now here the further uh, search is being made with by entering the journal title that is the electronic library. I have searched for the electronic library here 
and the page of that particular journal opens up on the right hand side top corner where uh, the publication mentions uh, the publication information and the details are provides uh, being provided including the ISS and number in print title the URL and the publisher that is the commercial publisher and the most uh, this is the most uh, important aspect of the publisher as we scroll down the page we come to the second part that is the publisher policies mentioned here the publisher policy says that open access pathways permitted by this journal policy are listed below by the article version click on the pathways for more detailed views here it shows the three types of sections of the publisher policies which has published version accepted version and submitted versions here are the icon representations by which you can see what it says with the plus and sign you can expand or collapse these sections and for further details of the publisher policies we uh, we can just click on the links provided below now as we expand the section it shows the various icons here uh, we have expanded the published version where it shows uh, the OA fees this publishers policy have OA fees associated with it they have uh, open access publishing pathway they have uh, no embargo period where you do not need to wait as mentioned uh, then it shows the accepted version where you can archive the article in an institutional repository after getting it peer reviewed that is the final version then it shows the submitted version it is the version of the article that we submit before getting it peer reviewed we can keep it any place of the places mentioned here that is the institutional repository non-commercial subject repository institutional website now here comes the iconography scheme that depicts the publisher policies the symbols are being mentioned uh, shown here with the name uh, of every symbol and the description about these symbols like first one is the icon of open access publishing wherever you see this icon mentioned in the publisher policies uh, by seeing this iconography you will be able to identify what this this symbol basically stands for this is the pathway includes the open access publishing second is the fees additional open access fees this pathway uh, requires the payment of a fee and uh, the cross uh, stands for the not permitted that means no open access pathway exists for the article version fourth is the copyright owners the copyright owners that have path required then uh, it shows some conditions then the license prerequisites locations notes publishers deposit and the main one embargo period the embargo period the pathway requires unless stated otherwise the embargo starts from the date of the publications and uh, lastly i would like to recommend to all the researchers who have started their research to try to understand the publisher's policy in the scholarly communication some icons are being provided by them that will help you to understand the publisher's policy. So I hereby complete my presentation and I have tried to touch all these aspects of this uh, self-archiving policies that is important for you as a researcher. Thank you.